senior year of high school. We're at the welcome back assembly the week school had started. Teachers, staff, and students are lined up in the bleachers of the gymnasium. I'm sitting on the front row on the very floor, fortunate enough to be right in front of the motivational speaker who was invited to give a talk before all of us. Throughout the duration of his speech, he said one line that really resonated with me, changed the way that I behaved from that moment forward. With more sincerity than I've ever seen in anyone before, he widens his stance, puts his shoulders back, chest out, and he says, we spend more time thinking about our dreams than we do actually acting on them. Instead of focusing on the progress we could actually make. Well, interesting. Now, I didn't have any dreams or goals, at least not at the time. So I thought to myself, what could I be doing now that would reflect what I might be doing in the future? And that line had inspired me to get to know my leadership advisor, Mr. Briggs, a fairly tall man with a smile almost as big as his heart. And he believed that if you wanted to change the world, your community, your peers, and ultimately yourself, you had to be willing to challenge your status quo. Him, with the help of an amazing leadership class, got me to accomplish just that. And it started with the small things, like doing projects and making posters. And then it built up. I started giving announcements at lunch. I emceed an assembly and ended up actually planning a school-wide assembly. And Mr. Briggs has kept me under his wing even to this very day. In fact, about a week after I graduated, he sends me an email and it said, Mark, you would be a great fit to speak at a leadership conference being held at Jackson High School that fall. I'll give you five minutes. What do you say? <laughs> well, enthusiastically, I took him up on that opportunity. I spent most of my summer practicing, prepping, and rehearsing for that speech, so when the time came for me to present, I would be more than ready. And that time did end up coming. I remember it very crisp and clear. I remember the host introducing me, calling my name, me walking up to the center of the gym, taking the mic and beginning my speech. And everything goes as planned. Almost everything. From beginning almost to the end, when I realized I forgot something rather important. I'd forgotten my conclusion. And I remember standing there in front of these 1,200 students from all across the region. The teacher that accompanying them, waiting for me to say something that could potentially inspire them. And I had nothing. So I admitted to my fault. I looked up at all of them. And I said, guys, I'm sorry, I forgot my final line. And I knew what would happen. Someone would walk up, take the mic away, a few people would give me a pity clap. <laughs> and I'd walk away in shame, completely repressing that memory. But instead, what actually happened was rather interesting. Because in the split second after I assessed what would happen, what started out as this slow applaud, Next thing you know, I'm standing in front of these 1,200 students giving me this huge standing ovation. They all start shouting and cheering, Mark, you got this. And my friends are like, yeah, you got this. Someone even shouts, Mark, we still love you. And my teacher, Mr. Briggs, on the side, smiling and clapping for me, very indirectly teaching me something, the virtue of vulnerability and the unconditional support that comes with it. My senior year, I was very shy and quiet and introverted. I neglected any social interaction I could. I spent most of my time in the library, eating, waiting for the next class period to start. 
Until one day, one of my friends introduces me to this girl. And for storytelling purposes, we're going to call this girl Josie. Over time, me and Josie began to form a really strong friendship. She asked me one day, what can I do to be more active here on campus? I thought about that for a moment. And then I encouraged her to run for student government. Now, she's like me. She was like me. Quiet, shy, a little introverted. And this task required that she put herself out there, that she make posters and market herself, give a speech in front of her entire class. But in spite of her skepticism, her insecurity, her one opponent she was going against, she ended up winning that competition. And to me, I was just helping a friend be more active on campus, helping a friend have something to put on their applications for college. But to her, it was an opportunity for her to push her limits, to challenge her status quo. And I was blind to that. I was blind to that, that is, until the very last day of school, after the senior farewell assembly, everyone saying their goodbyes. And at one point, I remember seeing her in the far corner of my eye. She's approaching me, crying. I grabbed her hands and I said, Josie, what's wrong? Real fast, she goes, I'm going to miss you. Well, thank you. I'm going to miss you, too. And we shared this nice little hug. And she goes, no, 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 there's something more. You changed my life. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Mark, you changed my life. Five words. Five words just like that to get me to realize what my advisor had been trying to teach me all along. That when you want to change the world, your community, your peers, and ultimately yourself, you have to be willing to challenge your status quo. And I'm grateful to have had an advisor like Mr. Brig, who could see that I could be more than what I thought I could be and blessed to have had an opportunity to change someone's life. However, the question remains for you. Who in your life can see something in you that you can't yet see? And who in your life can benefit by what you offer them? Thank you.